Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Casas. Uh, uh, I would like also to thank the uh, organization to invite me here uh, from the Netherlands to give a small talk about uh, what we think is going to happen in the big sector, what's happening at the moment and what's going to happen. Uh, I would like to focus on uh, uh, first some uh, information about what's going on in the Netherlands and then in the EU and then some uh, challenges that we are going to get in the total sector. So uh, I work for the product board for livestock and meat in the Netherlands, on the market department. And I don't know if you're familiar with the product board, but it's an organization which is financed by the sector itself. That means that we uh, have all, all kinds of activities, like uh, health programs or food safety programs, which are paid by all the members in the sector. So the primary producers, the slaughterhouses, the traders, they're all in the board of our organization and they decide what we should do for the total sector. We also get a little bit money from the government because we do some tasks for the government. So that's how we work. Okay, um, I would like to tell something about developments, threats and opportunities in the sector. Let's see if it works. First, something about uh, the pig population in the Netherlands. Uh, at the moment we have around 12 billion uh, pigs in the Netherlands. Uh, which is uh, around 1.2 million sows, that's including the not made it sows, uh, around uh, 6 million uh, veterans, and then of course the piglets that belong to them. Totally 12.2 uh, million uh, animals, and you see it's uh, quite stable the last uh, years. If we look at uh, the number of farms in the Netherlands, that's decreasing fairly rapidly. Uh, if you look at uh, the year 2000, we still had uh, 14, uh, 14,500 farms. At the moment, around 7,000 farms, and it's still declining. Um, uh, we have uh, a little 3,000 farms that have uh, um, uh, sows. We have around 6,000 farms with uh, fattening pigs, and from those farms, there are 2,000, around 1,800 who have both. So it's combined farms, sows plus. Um, Fetters. And we see that it's going down. Casper uh, Fetting was, was already talking about 2013. We expect also that, uh, especially in the south sector, that will, uh, will mean uh, that some farms or a lot of farms are not, uh, will not be there anymore after 2013. I will come back on that figure. Uh, if you look at the efforts, uh, south uh, farm size is growing. Uh, at the moment, it's around uh, 400 sows per farm. So we see a big uh, uh, growth in the average size. And if you look at the uh, average farm size for fattening pigs, then we are around 1,000 uh, pigs per farm at the moment. That may maybe not look too big, but we, in Holland we have a lot of farms who have uh, only a few hundred uh, pigs. They are, that's not their main activity, but they have uh, a stable already for uh, many, many years. And they may have two, three, four hundred pigs. Well, we expect that in 2013 as well. Uh, quite some of those farms will be out of business. This one I skipped, that's too small. If we look at the slaughterings, we are quite stable at the moment at 14 million slaughterings uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, in the last years, in 2005, 14 million, uh, we see a little increase again of a little 5% this year, so we expect to go uh, uh, at 14.2, 14.3 million slaughterings again. Uh, in the Netherlands, and it looks like that's going to stabilize around this figure. If you look at the export, that's been growing quite a lot from the uh, from Netherlands, and if you look at those figures, the blue ones is the meat export, and the uh, green ones is the live animal export. So we see that the growth in export is mainly due to the export of live animals. We have uh, very much progressed in the export of, uh, of animals, both piglets and slaughter pigs. Uh, where is the meat going? If we look at this uh, total uh, meat export, well, Germany, our neighboring country, is the most important country. 22% of the meat is going over there. Italy, Greece, and the United Kingdom, those four are the, the biggest, uh, the, 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 the main uh, import countries from, from Dutch meat. Uh, and we export only 10% to uh, countries outside the EU. What about the piglets? 
I told already that we are growing in export of piglets. Uh, 2010 was 6.7 million piglets. We expect another growth again, not spectacular, but 2.5%, maybe a little bit more. Uh, growth in the export of, uh, of piglets. The main country where the piglets are going is Germany, uh, more than 50%, 55%. Um, if you look, I will show the, 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 the red, the red one is, uh, is Germany, that's the destination Germany, 58% again with Germany this year. And you see, I'd like to highlight that we used to export a lot of piglets to Spain, 30% of the piglets went to Spain. At this moment, that's only 3% uh, of the total that we produce in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, when the new countries in the EU, uh, when we got those new markets in the EU, uh, there was a lot of uh, movement of piglets to the Eastern Europe. Export of pigs is quite stable and is going, it looks like it's going down a bit. Uh, we used to export 5, uh, five million in 2010, that will go down a little bit. Uh, a few percent is, uh, is going down. The main export, 80% of the pigs, 85% of the small pigs went to uh, Germany, goes to Germany. And then we have some like uh, Hungary and Poland. Poland. I will skip that. Uh, this about the production cost. Carsten Fleming also talked some, something about the production cost. Here I have the countries in Europe. Uh, you see that uh, within Europe, uh, the last two ones are Brazil and Canada. But those are all European countries. We see that the differences are not really big if you look at the, uh, the general uh, cost price, but we see uh, differences, especially Italy, that has to do also with the heavyweight fix, of course, and the uh, high fee costs relatively. Also, Spain has relatively some high fee costs. But on the other, uh, the other things you see, it's all around the 140 production cost. Then we look at those two, like Kasper Flinden already said, there we're talking about a uh, cost price of around uh, 1 euro. That means that's a, a difference of 40 cents per kilo uh, in the production cost of pigs. So you can imagine that uh, the competition um, on, the, on the market, that means, uh, means a lot. If we look at uh, the pig herd in the EU, uh, this is from the uh, Brussels uh, Eurostat figures. And we see an, uh, in the last year, uh, till uh, uh, May 11, till uh, uh, from yeah, to May uh, 2010, we see an increase total pigs in uh, Germany, in Spain, and also in Denmark and the Netherlands. We see a big decrease in Poland, uh, Italy also starts <coughs> total EU minus a half percent uh, pigs in this uh, period in this year. And if you look at the made in South. So the number of sows uh, made it in the country, there we see that is, in every country there is a decrease. Spain minus 5%, uh, also in the Netherlands under 1.5%, Italy nearly minus 8%, and in Poland even minus 20%. So that means uh, uh, a huge decrease in the number of made sows, and we can, uh, in, in the EU that's minus 5%, so we would expect at least uh, a lower uh, number of uh, animals. Um, uh, it, we have to calculate, of course, with the increase of production per, uh, per sow, so that will uh, level off again this figure a little bit. But this is uh, this gives, I think, uh, an idea of what's what's going to happen next year. If you look at EU pig meat production, pig meat production, well, the forecast is to 2020 that it will still be growing to 24 uh, million uh, tons. Uh, those are uh, figures from the Jira. Uh, meat club, they collect the data from uh, many, many countries and then they make uh, a total uh, <coughs> forecast. If you look at the consumption of the per capita in the EU, it looks like, like it has gone down, but this, those are the years that the new countries uh, came into the EU, so it gives a little uh, not real uh, picture. If we look at the forecast for 2020, we expect that the average consumption per capita will go to the 44 kilograms per head. If we look at the world, uh, pig, world pig meat production, then it's forecast that in, or in 2011 we will reach the level of 100 million tons. Uh, that's a figure <coughs> probably you can hardly imagine what it means, but um, you see that uh, there is still a forecast in, uh, in growth. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, and if you look at the world pig meat consumption, which is expected then it will uh, grow quite rapidly um, and, and to a more, yeah, one, 
of 21.5 kilogram in 2011, and it is expected that it will uh, continue to grow. In a country like Holland, at the moment, it's 42 kilograms per head. This is a pigmeat trade flow uh, picture. It shows, uh, in general, the, the, the major uh, pigmeat flows. Uh, the, the, the thickness of the arrow means uh, how much, uh, uh, oh, sorry, how, uh, uh, yeah, the level of, uh, of export or import. And blue means that it's forecasted that it will grow, and red means it's forecasted that it will diminish. We see from Europe uh, this big flow to Russia, and we see the flow to mainly uh, Southeast uh, Asia, Korea, Japan. The forecast is that, um, uh, and you see also China. Here. The forecast is that uh, to Russia and China it will uh, it will grow, and there will be some diminish diminishment to uh, Japan and Korea or the other Eastern, uh, Southeast Asian countries. Uh, you see here the arrow from South America, Brazil, to Russia. It's quite a lot. Uh, the forecast is from this uh, figures that it will uh, uh, decrease in, uh, in the future. And here you see the blue arrow is uh, uh, mainly between the North America and uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, sorry, East Southeast Asia. Uh, uh, it's a huge export and it's export expected that it will grow as well. Well, the world, uh, world pig meat trade is uh, position on the, on the market is based on, uh, of course, the cost price. What, what does it cost to produce a kilogram of meat? The exchange rates, well, uh, they play an important role, of course. Uh, then the feed price, we talked already about that. Uh, the availability of feed but, and also the price of the feed, which is a uh, a very important one is the main factor in the production. The control of animal diseases, very important and will be more and more important in the future, especially for exporting <coughs> countries like the Netherlands. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important factor. And then, of course, uh, are we going to have protection, protection of the markets? Yes or no? How easy will it be to get uh, meat from the different uh, other countries onto the European market, like Brazil, Canada, United States? Um, if we look at the total, we think that the world pig meat market still looks good in the direction of the future because the production will, will go up, but also the consumption worldwide will go up. Uh, we see a growth of consumption also in the EU. Uh, we see also an ongoing concentration of uh, the, uh, the production, uh, not only of the farms, but also on the uh, industry, so the slaughterhouses and the, 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 the marketers. In the future, of course, the cost price stays very important, and that's, uh, I would say that could be a big threat for, uh, for, uh, well, for the Netherlands anyway, because of the factors that I'm going to mention. The influence of the WTO, uh, of course, on the input protection, and uh, the defense of the EU production. What kind of defense will we have in the future? Some issues. There are challenges in the big meat sector in our country, but I think in every country but uh, it's, it's even more important in uh, countries that are exporting, are on the basis of, uh, are on the, the field of animal health, animal welfare, the food safety, the environment, very important, the image, getting more and more important, image and acceptance by the public. We feel that in our country and also in Germany, we see that it's getting more and more important. The focus on the sector is very, uh, very heavy, um, and we have to deal with it. Of course, the economy and the market position. I would like to say some short uh, highlights about that. We think prevention and control of diseases gets more and more important. Uh, <coughs> at the moment, we start a program in the Netherlands about getting free of the blue ear disease. That's, uh, uh, that's a disease that brings a lot of damage on the farms. Uh, it's widespread, it's in the whole world. We find this disease, but it's, it gives uh, high uh, problems in, in, in health if, uh, if you have this because. It facilitates other diseases to, uh, on the farm. Um, transparency on the health status is very important. We think that uh, in a sector who wants to grow and wants to produce in the future, we have to know between the different uh, parts in the sector or in the chain what is the situation in the first part, in the second part, in the third part. So information back and forth is very important. 
uh, it's getting more and more important. We see it also in the Netherlands that the fathomers who are buying the piglets are getting are asking more and more questions and want more and more information about the background of the animals. Use of antibiotics is a is a, a very important issue at the moment in the Netherlands. We should uh, diminish the antibiotic use with 50% in 2012. That's a huge uh, challenge to uh, bring it. Down, but um, it's it's very much in the picture, so we have to work on that. <laughs> if you look at welfare, of course we have to look at uh, we have to guarantee the animal welfare on base of animal needs. And what does the animal need? But also the welfare of the pig farmer. Don't forget the welfare of the pig farmer. He has to work in the farm. He has to be able to work with those animals. Uh, economics. We go for sustainable sustainable production, of course. Uh, if the costs are too high, we are out of business. So it has to be in this balance. Uh, the big challenge is to, to deal with the influence of the animal welfare organizations on the one hand, and also on the, the retailers. What is the role of the retailers in this? How are they going to, to, to steer in the production uh, uh, process? Because we want maybe big changes, but um, they have to be payable, and we want that the producers stay in, in, um, in production as well. Otherwise, we don't have meat, so that's quite, quite, quite easy, quite logical. What is, uh, what are the items then? The group housing of the sows in 2013, of course. Like I said, in the Netherlands, some farms, there will quite some farms will will quit business, uh, and the production will uh, be taken over by the bigger farms that invest and do their want. We might expect uh, a fall of around 100,000 sows, so let's say 10% of the total population in the Netherlands. Uh, on the other hand, the production of the sows is still going up, so um, we, uh, we expect this, uh, this factor. Castration, the declaration of Brussels, you probably heard about it in 2018, the, the idea that we should stop castration in the whole EU is a very big issue. We will have a conference on that, uh, uh, international conference, uh, at the end of uh, November. I will leave some information here, if you are interested, you can of course attend this, uh, this conference, because there we go to discuss what are the possibilities, but also what are the, the not possibilities on stopping with uh, castration. We know that in different countries we look very different to this subject. In one country it's a very big issue, like in the Netherlands. In other countries it's uh, hardly any issue at the moment, but we have to deal with this Brussels declaration. So uh, you are very much invited to attend this, uh, this conference. Uh, I will I will make it to uh, the organization I can give you. Uh, Tilbrook is an, uh, a thing that is coming. Uh, it's a big discussion at this moment in uh, Germany and in the, in the Netherlands. It's coming as well. So uh, not uh, anymore uh, cutting the tails of the pigs. Um, the transport, transport, very important uh, issue in Brussels as well. Um, the transport of animals, uh, we will have to deal with uh, uh, shortening of the distances, shortening of distances of live animals. We will have to deal with uh, higher quality standards for transport. Um, whether we like it or not, but, uh, there is much pressure on the sector to deal with that. And uh, well, in the Netherlands, we uh, started this uh, quality system, livestock logistics uh, transport system. And in the pig sector, 95% of the uh, farmers and the slaughterhouses are involved in this quality system. That means that we have closed the chain. That, uh, if you want to be in this quality system, then you have to be, your pigs have to be transported by transporters who are also in the system. So we have closed that whole um, system. A big trend is, of course, that we don't have a level playing field with the countries outside uh, the EU. Um, since the time is uh, Image, I would like to say, say something about the image and acceptance of the sector. Uh, we see that uh, the discussion about uh, acceptance of the sector is getting uh, getting more heavy and more heavy. Uh, you have to show what you are doing in the sector. We have image campaigns in the Netherlands where we show uh, uh, the public what is happening in the sector, what are we doing. Uh, on websites we have uh, around 20 farms which are open to the public. They can visit, come and visit the farm all the time. They cannot see the animals but they can see it behind glass. So we have to work on um, um, transparency, be open to the public. School campaigns and education programs, we put a lot of effort in that because that's where it starts, how people think about the sector. Of course, the economy, uh, uh, 
we always have to keep in mind that it has to be efficient and profitable and also sustainable production, of course. Uh, very important that the production is market oriented. And that's, well, you all know that, but it's getting uh, more and more uh, important that uh, we listen to what consumers want, what the retailers want. Um, I think the, the main thing is what we already discussed, or what, what I talked about, is the level playing field. Um, if we look at the EU and look outside the EU, we have of course this problem that it's forbidden at the moment to use those animal proteins in the pig feed, those uh, bone products, which we used to use in the, in the pig feed. Well, that makes the pig feed prices very high, of course. So that's in the EU, but not outside the EU, so that makes us unfavorable for us. The same is for the uh, genetic modified uh, organs. In the, in the feed, which is, uh, there's a zero, uh, zero tolerance at the moment. It will probably change, but that makes that the feed prices get, uh, get higher. The welfare and health issues, if you look at all the conditions that we have to uh, comply to in, uh, in, in, in Europe, and also in our country, um, they go far above what we see in uh, countries like, uh, like Brazil or uh, other pork producing countries that gives us uh, uh, yeah, not a real a strong competitive uh, situation. The only solution to this is, I think, that uh, we always have to work on technical top management on the farms and that the information that we send back and forth from the farms until the end of the chain to the retail and back should be uh, uh, even better and better all the time. So we have to organize that even better. Health is very important for a country, uh, high health in the herds. The quality of the product, of course, and the quality of the production. How is it produced? And can I share, can I um, um, uh, show it to the to the, the final customer? Can I can I show what we are doing with this? Uh, uh, how we produce it, and that we are doing our best on that. The discussion about piglet mortality, for example, is also a, a discussion like that. If it, if, if people hear that 10, 15 percent of piglets uh, are dying between birth and uh, in the fattening period. Well, they don't want to hear. They want. They don't want to hear those kind of figures. So we have to, to see how we deal with that, and, and tell, explain them that it's uh, maybe in pigs quite normal that you have mortalities like that, like in mice and other types of animals. Um, and then, uh, and that's going on already. You see that there's special distinct, distinctive segments of meat production. That means uh, programs <coughs> between uh, the producers and the, and the, the meat factories and the retailers. To, to segment the production for special markets. Thanks for your attention.